Good evening, Bethlehem and saints of God. Good evening, good morning, good afternoon, and maybe even good night or whatever time you've tuned into our Wednesday Zoom Bible study. My name is Pastor Michael Eton. For those who do not know me, and I serve as the pastor of Bethlehem Baptist Church right here in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. And before we get into our Wednesday Zoom Bible study tonight, I want to take this opportunity uh, to do a little fishing to see if everyone at the sound of my voice in Garvin County, in Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, have a church home. You may have just gotten saved or given your life to Jesus Christ via a radio or television or podcast ministry, and you need a church home. And if you're listening to me and you live in Garvin County, you're in driving distance to the Bethlehem Baptist Church. I want to extend this personal invitation for you to come and join us this coming Sunday. You may have just moved to Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, or you may just not have a church home. We want to extend once again, this as a personal invitation for you to visit us this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. And we're located again at 311 North Dunbar. Bring a family member and a friend with you and join us this coming Sunday. Before you join us, why don't you go ahead and visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. Again, you can visit our website at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And there you can get to know us. And once you get to know us, why don't you go ahead and follow or friend us as you scroll down the page there on our website. Click the Facebook tab, the Instagram tab, the Twitter tab, the LinkedIn tab, and follow us and friend us in what I call Cyber Church. We'd love for you to be a part of our Cyber Church family first, but ultimately, we want to see you in this place this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. Again, you're listening to our Wednesday Zoom Bible study, and tonight's lesson is entitled The Providence of Mother. If you look over my shoulder there, this is how our Wednesday service is structured. We're going to have an opening prayer, some announcements, a reading of the Word of God, an introduction video, the Bible study itself, an invitation, and a benediction. Uh, so let's go ahead and open up in a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify your holy name, and we come today, Father, asking, Lord, that you will speak now for your people need to hear from you. We ask, Lord, that you forgive us of our sins, wash us and cleanse us, that we might be in right relationship and fellowship with you. That we may hear a ream of word tonight that speaks uh, to our hopes, our heartaches, our pains, our deliverance. Father, speak to us tonight, for we need to hear from you. We're not interested in hearing from a man. We want to hear from God. And we commit ourselves, our minds, our souls unto you. I, as the teacher, submit myself to the power of your Holy Spirit. And the students, at the sound of my voice, submit themselves to the power of the Holy Spirit as a teacher, that, that this may be a divine connection tonight. In Jesus' name, or this evening, or this morning, or this afternoon, in Jesus' name. Amen. And praise the Lord. Uh, first thing we like to do is to highlight uh, every week uh, fasting and praying. Um, Jesus Christ said, my house shall be called a house of prayer. And we want to make uh, the body of Christ here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church a part of Jesus's house. And we do that by fasting and praying every Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., this Friday is May the 13th, uh, 2022, and we want you to join us, and we will be fasting and praying for our church, and if you decide to join us this coming Friday, you fast and pray for your church, uh, we'll be fasting and praying for our city, and if you join us, saints of God, and we encourage you to do so, you fast and pray for your city. If you join us uh, this Friday, we're fasting and praying for the counties that make up our great state of Oklahoma. You fast and pray for the counties that make up your great state. And we'll come together and fast and pray uh, for our country. And we want to encourage you to do so. We originally started to fast and pray because of COVID-19. 
And I'm not taking this lightly and will not take COVID-19 lightly because COVID-19 has done something that no other event has done other than inclement weather on a temporary basis, which has closed down the church. So we will continue to fast and pray that God would deliver us from COVID-19, COVID-19 effects, and COVID-19 variances in Jesus' name. Also, a few other prayer requests that we uh, challenge you to continue May, to fast and pray. Sunday, May the 15th, we will be celebrating our 15th anniversary service. So I need you to fast and pray for that church. Uh, fast and pray for traveling mercies this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, as uh, people in our church will be traveling both Saturdays and Sunday. And we're fasting and praying for safe travel for also for Timothy Baptist Church from um, from Tulsa, Oklahoma, uh, to Paul's Valley. We're fasting and praying that we might be a great church of hospitality. And Jesus Don't take this name. lightly. Also fast and pray for those in our body that are sick and trying to overcome. Continue to fast and pray for Brother Ray and continue to fast and pray for Brother Rushing. And again, uh, fast and pray for those of us who will be traveling this weekend. Uh, we believe once again that God has the power to deliver, to set free, to heal in Jesus' name. So please join us this coming Friday and even pray all week. But join us this coming Friday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. as we believe God can move the worlds on our behalf in Jesus' name. Well, Bethlehem and saints of God, let's go ahead and get into our series. And let me give a brief review of our series before we Free of Mother, it. even if it makes us sad and have to cry sometimes. We want to remember Mother because uh, we've been standing on this text all through our Mother series or Mama series, uh, Proverbs 31, 25. She is clothed with strength and dignity, and she laughs at the days to come. This series is being preached so that Christians can celebrate their mothers and their memories of their mothers. And I've been saying throughout this time, we need to make Mother's Day, take it from a Mother's Day to a Mother's Month. We have months designated for all different kinds of occasions. And I think that mothers deserve to be celebrated more than just once a day. A Mother's Month uh, should be in order that we might encourage the people of God and even the culture at large on how to treat mama. Mama is very, very special. Mama is carrying a weight. And we need to train men and boys and children to help carry that, that weight that mama carries in Jesus' name. During this series, uh, we learned uh, the first message in this series, and you can go up to the website and get these messages, the pain of mother. And last Wednesday night, May the 4th, we talked about the prayer of mother this last Sunday from 1 Samuel chapter 2, verses 9 through 11. And tonight we're going to talk about the providence of mother, the providence of mother. And we're coming from Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10, Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And I will read in the hearing Exodus chapter 2, verse 1 and 10. Get your Bibles. If not, it will be on the screen here. And it reads as following. And it says, Now a man of the tribe of Levi married a, a Levite woman. And she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. And when she saw, when she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months, and when she couldn't hide him no longer, she got a papyrus uh, basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it amongst the reeds along the bank of the Nile. And his sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe. 
and her attendants were walking alongside the riverbanks. She saw the basket amongst the reeds and sent her female slaves to get it. She opened it and saw a baby. He was crying and she felt sorry for him. This is one of the Hebrew babies, she said. Then her sister asked Pharaoh's daughter, shall I go and get one of the Hebrew women to nurse the baby for you? Yes, go, she answered. So the girl went and got the baby's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, take this baby and nurse him for me and I will pay you. So the woman took the baby and nursed him. When the, the child grew older, she took him to Pharaoh's daughter. and He became her son. She named him Moses saying, I drew him out of the water. Again, today, saints of God, may God only bless the doers of his holy and righteous word. I read to you Exodus chapter 2, verses 1 through 10. And tonight we're going to look again in a message entitled The Providence of Mother. We're going to talk about a mother's marriage, a mother's maternity, and a mother's mapping. And we want Christian mothers to know, or we want Christian mothers to know that they should put their children in the providence of God. Christian mothers should place their children in the providence of God. We're going to look at this brief uh, video and then we'll get into the word. And there went a man of the house of Levi, and took to wife a daughter of Levi. And the woman conceived and bare a son. And when she saw him that he was a goodly child, she hid him three months. And when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes, and daubed it with slime and with pitch, and put the child therein. And she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister stood afar off to wit what would be done to him. And the daughter of Pharaoh came down to wash herself at the river, and her maidens walked along by the river's side. And when she saw the ark among the flags, she sent her maid to fetch it. And when she had opened it, she saw the child, and behold, the babe wept. And she had compassion on him and said, This is one of the Hebrews' children. Then said his sister to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and call to thee a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go. And the maid went and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said unto her, Take this child away and nurse it for me, and I will give thee thy wages. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And the child grew, and she brought him unto Pharaoh's daughter, and he became her son. And she called his name Moses, and she said, Because I drew him out of the water. Amen. And praise the Lord. The question I want to ask tonight in tonight's Bible study that I want you to think about is, has your mother ever saved your life? Has your mother ever saved your life? I know this is a recording, so you can't uh, speak out, but I imagine that most people would say that their mother has saved their life in one way or another. I have a testimony that my mother used to uh, share about how one time um, a truck was bearing down on her baby boy in a parking lot. And my mother was a Christian, so she prayed to the Lord. And she prayed to the Lord something told her to scream and she screamed and she said that that truck stopped right before it was about to hit me i have several testimonies from my mother of how the devil has tried to take my life and i have very many personal testimonies on my own of how 
the devil has tried to take my life. Uh, but on a few occasions, my mother's testimony is God told her the right thing to do and it saved my life. I couldn't help but to think that everybody listening at the sound of my voice, especially in this time of great controversy during Roe v. Wade, everyone listening at the sound of my voice, your mother saved your life because if you were born in the early 70s, after Roe v. Wade was established as, as, as law, mothers in our nation had to choose to have a child because they, for the first time in history, would have the right to choose uh, death or life for a child. So if you were born after 1970s or after the Roe v. Wade decision, your mother chose to have you in Jesus' name. And let me talk about that. She chose to have you. And, and some she chose to have, uh, and it wasn't the right time to have you. Uh, somebody once said that if you choose to wait until you can afford children, uh, for a woman, it would be too late to have children because women have a certain time. They're most uh, fertile during the ages, I believe, of 14 and, and 30. And they say at 35, a woman's womb becomes geriatric and it's hard to have a child. So mothers have been choosing life for you ever since the Roe v. Wade. So yes, your mother has saved your life. And even before that, mothers choose to give birth to children. And in this text, as we're looking at, as we look at the map briefly, um, of a mother who chose to have her baby. And, and I said she chose to have her baby because, uh, Roe Wade gives you a choice, but the Pharaoh's edict did not give the people of God who were slaves in Egypt a choice. Every firstborn child was supposed to be put to death. Let me say that again. Every firstborn child was to be put to death. There's a testimony of two uh, maid servants or midwives who was under that edict and they decided not to follow that edict and they saved a lot of children's life. Well, Moses' mother was not one of those midwives. She was a mother who saw her baby boy and decided to rebel against the edict of Pharaoh. When she gave birth to that uh, pretty baby boy, she looked at that baby boy and saw that he was a good thing. And that's what I challenge mothers in our culture and our society today who have the power to choose life or death to know that God has placed that child in your life and that child is made in the image of God. I talk about the book, uh, Black Lives Matters in the Bible, subtitled, which I wrote, subtitled, All Lives Matters in the Bible. And, and there it's not tracing the roots of Black people in the Bible. It's tracing the word of God and the value of life in the word of God that gives us in our lives value. Well, this mother believed that her son would have value and oh, what her son would do for the people of God. And in this map, uh, I'm, I'm trying to use my sanctified imagination, my observation as we've learned in loyalty month. And I, I was trying to see where Moses was born. Moses was born in what they call upper Egypt. And, and that's up here. They considered this upper and down here is lower Egypt or and, and, and he, was, he was born 
in, in, in this area, this region. You see this name, Ramses. You know, that was one of the pharaohs, was Ramses. You see the Sphinx. Uh, and, and I believe that since Moses was uh, born in this area, and, and, and I believe that this may have been the part of the Nile that his mother placed him in somewhere around here. And, and I call it the providence of mother tonight because which, where she put him, the baby boy would float down the Nile and right into the hands of Pharaoh's daughter. Hello, somebody. Now, that's uh, the providence of God. I, I wonder, as I use my sanctified imagination, was that the providence of God or was that the mapping of mother? We'll talk about that a little later. But as we see it on the map, we see that this is where possibly would have been where she placed Moses in the Nile. Let's get to point number one, a mother's marriage. Now, a man of the tribe of Levi married a Levite woman. And I got to weigh on this heavy last night because uh, we talked about the nature of and our cultural impact of being a community or a village without marriage. Let me say that again. Um, a mother's married. These two young people decided to get married. And I told you last night that many, many young folk today opt out against marriage. And, and that's okay for the culture, but for Christian marriages or Christian singles, God had a plan for the family, and the plan for the family what began in Genesis, where God made man, and he pulled a, 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 a rib piece out of him and formed woman, and that's where he created marriage, and, and we need to get back to the ways of God in the church as well as in the culture, because if you have strong marriages in the church. You'll have strong marriages in our culture. And one of the reasons I believe that our community is so in an uproar today is because of the lack of marriage. And it's not just in African-American culture to just hit harder in the African-American culture because most of our culture has uh, fallen back on marriage. Uh, at one time, we were thought to be a Christian nation, and, and, and as a Christian nation, we had strong marriages. But after the sexual revolution, so during that time of Roe v. Wade, uh, Satan got footloose and fancy free and began to destroy marriages and destroy lifelong commitments for marriages. And, 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 and marriages in a community leaves women and children unprotected. And that's why I have to preach when I look at this text to Christian folk, to Christian singles. God says that if you don't have the gift of singleness, it's time for you to get married. But you just can't just m marry anybody. Uh, and the gift of singleness is if you have the sexual passion. Hello, somebody. You need to get married. It's a choice. Married is a choice. You have to choose to marry, and you have to choose to marry someone in your own tribe. In New Testament terms, as you marry, um, do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. Do not be yoked together with unbelievers. For what does righteousness and wickedness have in common, or what fellowship can light have with darkness? So when Christians decide to get married, you have to marry somebody of your own tribe. You got to marry a Christian person, someone who loves the Lord with all their heart, mind, and soul, just like you should. Because God says you should marry someone that's not in your own tribe. And that's another way that the devil destroys Christian households is that there are marriages who are unequally yoked, and some will tell you the testimony of what happens when you marry 
someone who's not saved it interrupts and interferes with your Christian faith when you want to be blessed of God and want to give 10% or more of your income to the church. They don't want to give nothing. When you want to go to church or Sunday school and you'd like to have your companion to be there with you, they don't go and don't have anything to do with the Lord. And it's tough being in an unequally yoked marriage. So I want to warn Christian, not just to marry, but you got to marry someone of your own tribe. You have to marry someone who is a Christian who loved the Lord with all their heart, mind, and soul, like you should love the Lord with your whole heart, mind, and soul. And if you're not and haven't developed that kind of relationship, then you need to take time to develop your relationship with God first because that will help you to maintain a good and godly marriage that is meant to last a lifetime. Young folk back in the day said they want somebody who's ride or die. How can you want somebody ride or die when you won't commit? Hello, somebody. You say you want somebody to ride or die. You want a woman to ride or die with you. You won't even commit. You won't even get married. There's a show on television entitled Married Me Now. And we have uh, women who have been in relationships. Uh, longest I've seen is probably six years, six or eight years. And they, uh, the show is uh, around this woman asking that man to marry her now. A woman shouldn't have to ask a man to marry her now. Stop wasting your time and dead in relationship, Christian singles. Stop wasting your time and dead in relationship because the devil is stealing your family. He's stealing your children. He'll be stealing your joy. If you waste your time and dead in relationships, if you waste your time and dead in relationships, that means anyway, you're unequally yoked. A Christian man will want to commit and get married, have children, as God's word says. So in the text, we see first the value of family under the text or the title, the providence of mama, the providence of mama, the providence of mama. I can hear mama saying to many of her children today, you need to get rid of that zero and get a hero. Hello, somebody. Mama always could tell whether a person is right or wrong for us. Listen to mama today. And there's some relationships should end as a result of this uh, Bible study tonight. There should be some breakups in Jesus' name. Mama is speaking in Jesus' name. That was the first point, the marriage of mother and we see the second point, the maternity of mother. See, that's the way God designed it. And they used to say it back in the day, first comes love, then comes marriage, and then comes a baby in a carriage, something like that. But first, they got married. And second, the maternity happened, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. That's the order of things. We're having family or doing family backwards if we even get to family. Um, women are giving their lives away to all these different men and have different baby daddies. We have a term for that, different baby daddies. And really, they're really not daddies. They're sperm don donors. They don't spend time or invest. In, and that woman, nine times out of 10 of those children, because they didn't have, didn't have to commit to the relationship. See, when we had a conservative society, when women all would determine to save themselves with marriage or for marriage, men didn't even have, didn't have an alternative back in the culture back in the day. The only alternative for sexual activity was a prostitute. Hello, somebody. But nowadays, you made it, women have made it so easy to where men don't have to be committed and they can get those sexual desires fulfilled and don't even have to get married. Hello, somebody. But babies should be born in the context of marriage with a man there committed 
for life to the marriage, to the wife and to the children committed for life. That's a heroic thing, man, to do is to choose a woman, marry her, ride or die, oh, for life. And for them children, ride or die for life. We need this in the African-American community. We need marriages, not just marriages that last two and three years for 50% of the divorces all in and divorce. And it's the same. And, and back in the early 2000s, late, uh, uh, late uh, 90s, the divorce rate was higher in the church. Because people are not obeying the word of God. Get married, stay married, ride or die. Have children, have a family. A family is a young enterprise. Or starting a family is a young enterprise. The older you wait to get married, the less children you'll be able to have. Hello, somebody. And some would tell you, give a testimony about how they waited too late. The woman is on a clock. She is on the clock. And if she wants to have children in a regular way, she don't have to, if she wait late, she's going to have to have ten dollars to $20,000 for uh, fertility, investing in fertilities. And most folks don't have that kind of money. Get married and have children. I did a message in. Uh, Timothy Baptist Church, for well, the text was Jeremiah 29, and it started at four. And at four, uh, the text told him to settle down, settle down. And he told him to get married and have children and multiply. And this is the same word tonight. God is saying, settle down, people, get married, have children, do things God's way. She all oh, got married and then she became pregnant with a son. And what she saw and what many mothers see, if they're not cheated out of this choice, if they're not lied to, when they see that baby boy, baby girl that they have, they will see as this mother said, saw of Moses that this was a fine child. This child is made in the image of God. And guess what? This child will be made in your image and in the image of the father and mother. This is a fine child. Having a family is a fine thing to do. It's God's thing to do. Hello, somebody. One of the first commandments in the Bible is to be fruitful and multiply. But it got married first and was fruitful and multiplied in the family context. She saw that it was a fine child and she hid him for three months. Hello, somebody. This is Hebrew chapter 11, which gives 23, which gives an indication of what was happening. It says, by faith, the woman, and that's what you have to have children. Many times you have to have children by faith. You, you can't worry about how you're going to provide for your children. You've got to have them by faith. You can't worry about the right time to have children. You have to have children by faith. Uh, you can't worry about what's going to happen when that child is born. You have to do it by faith. This is what happened in, in Hebrews chapter 11, 23. By faith, Moses' parents hid him for three months after his birth because they saw that he was a beautiful child and they were unafraid of the king's edict. They were unafraid. They saw their baby boy and they were unafraid of the king's edict. And we must be unafraid of what's happening in our culture and our society today where they're trying to get us a million babies a year to kill our families. They're killing our beautiful children who are made in the image of God and made in our own image as well. Be unafraid of what's going on in our culture and society today. Stand for right in Jesus' name. Because if you're a Christian, you don't have a right to choose life and death. And really, in culture and in society today, the only place that you can choose and not be arrested and put to death yourself is in the mother's womb. Don't be afraid of what's going on in our culture. Stand up for families. Don't be afraid 
Oh, when somebody gets pregnant, God is in control by the providence of God. Let our beautiful children live. They say that Planned Parenthood specializes in the black community. And how can I say that Black Lives Matters when a young 26-year-old boy gets shot in the back of the head in Grand Rapids? And I can't say, oh, to Planned Parenthood in our hoods and in our communities that are persuading women to, oh, shoot their babies in the back of the head in the womb. Woo-wee. Don't be afraid of the circumstances that happens when you're supposed to have a child, allow God to provide for you in Jesus' name. You got to do this stuff by faith. You're a Christian, too. You got to do this stuff by faith. When I had my baby girl, I wasn't ready. We weren't financially ready to have children then, but I saw how God provided for that child. Woo, that's deep. God provided for that child. God will provide for your child as well, but you got to live by faith. Lastly, at least I keep us too long. We're talking about the providence of mother, the providence of mother. We've been looking at Exodus chapter 20, verses 1 through 10. The mapping of mothers, the last thing, but she decided to come up with a plan. And, and I don't know whether this is uh, a, a, a plan uh, by her intellectual knowledge and many times that's what faith should be they said they move by faith faith doesn't mean that there's no intellectual knowledge that is in place as a matter of fact you should have a plan a plan to step out in faith and let me read you this text and get and and, and talk more about this when they said but when she couldn't hide him any longer remember they gave an edict said every every boy of the Hebrew boys, the Israelite boys were to die. She came up with a plan and, and, and get, got a basket that could float. And she placed him in it and put him among the reeds along the banks of the Nile. Remember, they, talk, they talked about, they told us to make observation, make observation. I showed you that map and I showed you Ramsey's right there. You see, if, if I was a mother and wanted to save my child, I, I can imagine she knew it was an event for Pharaoh's daughter to come and bathe because she, that she had her entourage with her. I can imagine that the Hebrews knew where she went and bathed. I can imagine. And, and he was born right up there by Oh, possibly where the Pharaoh or Pharaoh's daughter lived because they served as slaves. Uh, so, so, so I can imagine they knew, I can imagine they knew when, at what time she bathed, what spot in the river she bathed. I, I could imagine that this was a mapping of mother trying to set her baby in the right place at the right time and praying that the Pharaoh's daughter would, would find favor with her baby boy. This was the providence of God, but I think and believe that this was a divine design as well as a human design. Because you look at this and you think, now why in the world would you put the baby in a basket on the Nile? Mothers ain't going, they have, they have to risk for the life. She had to risk for the life of her child. But I believe this was a divine plan that she knew where Pharaoh's bathed. And, and she knew that her child was beautiful. And when she looked in the face of that child, she, she believed that if I could just put this baby where Pharaoh's daughter is, there's only a one somebody who could, oh, who could not die because of not doing what Pharaoh says. It, it, she, she, she believed that if Pharaoh's daughter could find her baby boy, that he could be saved. I believe this was a divine plan. That's why I call it mother's mapping. 
mother's mapping and she put them there. I can imagine she was praying and, 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 and what happened? We see in the text what happened. She found that baby boy in the same way the mother looked in that baby boy's face and said that he was a beautiful child. And, 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 and God had Moses, the baby boy, to cry at the right time. Hello, somebody. Sometimes that's what it takes is to cry at the right time. Woo! For people to have compassion upon you. Mother's mapping. So I don't believe that she just put him out willy-nilly. I believe she knew exactly what she... They said a, woman, a man don't have nothing on a woman with a plan. Hello, somebody. And I believe this was her mapping. This was her plan. And it, and it worked out really, really well. It worked out really, really well. This is what Genesis 21 and uh, 15 through 19 says. And the water and the skins uh, were gone. This was another uh, situation where God saved a son, a child. And this was with, with Hagar. And Hagar had come to the end of her rope. And, and, and Hagar uh, was thrown out of the house by Abraham. We called him Father Abraham. Well, he had a, a, another son before the promised son came along because he was trying to help God out, which was his wife's idea. And she gave him Hagar. He went into her and guess what? She gave birth to the child, but the child was not the promised child. You can't help God out by disobeying his word to accomplish his plans. So to make a long story short, Moses uh, sent her and that son packing because Sarah became jealous of the son and her because she got an attitude. She got all suchy muchy because Sarah couldn't have a child, but she later did. And she didn't want her son to be mixed up with her son. So what happened was, is that Abraham sent her to the desert, gave her a skin of water. And when that water was gone, she was in the desert. And, and this is what it says. She, she had to leave the boy because she couldn't watch the boy die. And, and, and she saw that he, when she saw, and when she sat there, she began to sob. And this is interesting. This is why I say, mothers, you need to know that God will provide for your children. It says that she began to sob. And verse 17 says, God heard the boy crying. She began to sob, but God heard the boy crying. And the angel of the Lord called to Hagar from heaven and said to her, what's the matter, Hagar? Do not be afraid. God heard the boy crying as he was lying there. Lift up your boy and take him with, take his hand and I will make him a great nation. And God opened her eyes and saw a well of water. She thought her life was over. She had laid him under a bushel for him to die because she couldn't see him dying. It says she began to sob, but God heard the child. Moses in the Nile began to cry out. And, and, and when he cried out, Pharaoh's daughter had favor with him. Hello, somebody. God in the middle of a desert, oh, heard the voice of the child. Mothers, don't you know that mother is mothering is a providential thing between you and God and that God will provide for your every need and the need of the child. Should you be concerned whether or not you can provide for the child? Should you be concerned whether or not this is the right time to have children? And should you, don't you know that God is providential in your motherhood and he will work it out where he will provide for your children and by him providing for your children guess what he'll provide for you too hello somebody that's been my own testimony that's been my own testimony and that's your testimony today the providence of god the providence of motherhood you don't have to worry, mother, about providing for your children. God will provide for your children. And in the meantime, he'll provide for you as well. 
That's what the providence of mother teaches us today. And I want you to be encouraged mothers because mothering is a, 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 a thankless job. It's a full-time job. It's on call 24 hours and mothering don't stop when your children get grown because many times the children don't really get grown at 19 or 18 and 19. Many times you got to mother them up until they're about 30 or 40 before they get their lives together. And even after then, mothers are needed. So we want to encourage you mothers. And we believe that you're involved in God's work. And we need God's work in our communities today. Allow God to work providentially uh, through you. Many times you've heard children say, that mama was both mama and daddy. What they, what really what they're saying is that God is working providentially through mama. He's becoming a father to the fatherless and a mother to the motherless. So we want to encourage you mothers to know that you're not in this on your own. You're not alone. In Jesus' name, what you do matters. What you do is important. That baby that you gave birth to, or those two or three, four, five babies that you gave birth to are important in Jesus' name. They're made in the image of God, and they're made in your own image. Hello, somebody. If you're convicted by the lifestyle that you're living. We can all repent because we've all done some wrong things, especially when it comes to love. Christians really, really stumble up when it comes to love, but we got to do things God's way because that's where uh, the devil can trip us up to most is when it comes to our seeking love. And this text is key for us being able to do things God's way in Jesus' name. You've been listening to our Wednesday Zoom Bible study. We talked about the providence of mother tonight. We want Christian mothers to know that they should place their children in the providence of God. We pray that you are encouraged. We pray that mama has spoke tonight for those who are listening at the sound of my voice. And I hope through by the power of the Holy Spirit that you've heard some things that mothers have been trying to get you to do in your life so that you can, your life can be pleasing to the Lord. Before I leave, I'll be remiss to let you know about the providence of God, which is probably working right now. Because you're listening at the sound of my voice. I don't know where. We try to put this out as far as we can. And many of our podcasts are heard internationally. Uh, we try to put it out as far as we can for these providential moments on Facebook and Instagram and LinkedIn and, and YouTube. We try to put this word out as far as we can for this providential moment. And this is a providential moment for a child that do not know their mother. I mean, do not know their father. You're fatherless. Mother's Day means the world to you, but Father's Day don't mean a thing to you because you don't know your earthly daddy, but you know him and you know he was no good. This providential moment in time is from God. For the Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. God let his son perish on the cross for our sins. And if you're listening today and you can believe that Jesus Christ was God's only son and that he died for your sins, was buried and raised again on the third day, then today, you can be saved because guess what? That's what your Christian mama had been praying for most of your life anyway. You were raised in the church, but you don't live like you were raised from the church. You've got to give your life to Jesus Christ. And that's what the providence of mama is doing right now. You heard about Jesus, some of you, all of your life. Some, it may be the first time. But if you accept him and believe that Jesus Christ 
is God's only son. And once again, believe that he died for your sins and was buried and raised again so that you can enter into a personal relationship right now, today. You can be saved by praying this simple prayer. And I pray that you do either right now or in a time of personal reflection after you've heard this message. You can pray this prayer. Father God, in Jesus' name, I'm hearing the voice of my mama and she's been praying that I give my life to Jesus Christ my whole life. I'm hearing the voice of grandmama. She's been praying. I'm hearing the voice of God through the preacher, through the providence of mama tonight. And, and, and I want to give my life to you. I do believe that Jesus Christ was God's only son. I do believe that he died for my sins, was buried and raised again on the third day. So today I give my life to Jesus Christ. I give my will, I give my all, I give my heart, my mind, my soul, my might over to you that I might from this point on live for you and obey every word that you command. In Jesus' name, amen. And praise the Lord. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, if you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, Garvin County, you're in driving distance to our church. And I'm not inviting you to our church any longer. I'm telling you to come home. Come home to the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. When a child is born in the hospital, a child doesn't go home on his own. He has to have parents. And that's what the church is, the spiritual parents here on earth for your soul. So if you pray that prayer for the first time and you're anywhere near Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, you need to come on home this coming Sunday at the 11 a.m. service. Again, bring a family member or friend with you if you're uncomfortable, but you come on home. Again, we're located at 311 North Dunbar, right here in the heart of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma. Uh, visit our website uh, to get to know us better at www.heargodsword at Bethlehem.com. And there um, you can get to know us. And also there's a spot where you can jot me a note on that website. and Let me know that you prayed this prayer for the first time. And I'll give you a call before Sunday to welcome you to the body of Christ right here at the Bethlehem Baptist Church. And if you're listening anywhere outside of Paul's Valley, Oklahoma, you need to find a church home. If you prayed that prayer for the first time, we're going to be praying that God will deliver you to a church home. You need to be in a church home. You need to be in a Bible teaching, Bible living, Bible believing body of Christ that you might be able to grow up in the things of God. Well, Beth Lamb, we want to thank you for listening tonight. And as always, I want to encourage you to stay connected. Stay connected. We live in a very uncertain time. You need to stay connected to God's person. We do that through prayer. That's why we challenge you to fast and pray on Friday, April the 13th. I mean, May the 13th. From 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., get fervent as we learn in loyalty month with God. Stay connected to his person, stay connected to his precepts. That's why we have our Bible study. That's why we encourage you to come to Sunday school at 10 a.m. this coming Sunday and study your lesson. I'll send out more information about that in Pastor's Text tomorrow, Bethlehem, you know. But that's because you got to be stay connected to his precepts and you got to stay connected to God's people. We cannot grow fully without staying connected to these three principles of your Christian faith. So Bethlehem, stay connected. Let me go ahead and give the benediction. Father God, we thank you. We praise you. We glorify your holy name. You're truly worthy to be praised. We lift you up tonight and ask, Father, that you put your hedge of protection around us, that you keep us safe from our harm and danger until we meet again. And the people of God said, amen. And praise the Lord, you are dismissed in Jesus' name.